got you here. Thing I've been so bad about is dressing up and presenting myself every day. I put a camera on hold. Nothing is gonna be 100% perfect. 80-20, Mediterranean lifestyle. Out. Good morning. Hello. Welcome to the vlog. On the way to the gym right now. Gonna get a little workout in. Oh, here comes the beautiful sun that's only gonna be here for like two hours today. I can't wait for you guys to see my cute little, like, honestly almost Valentine's Day outfit that I got on. Because you know Caroline, she always wears crazy athletic wear. So anyways, it's so freaking cold. Why am I sitting in the car talking right now? outside all right the back workout is complete the sun is up for a few more hours so I'm immediately gonna go home now and get working on some focaccia bread <laughs> I knew I was going to film this, well technically, if I'm being brutally honest, I was going to film another meal prep video yesterday, but they take so much time and preparation and everything that I just wasn't gonna get it done in time. So I was like, 
The second best thing I could do is film a full day of eating, as you can see from the title. And the next thing we're gonna work on is lunch, even though it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. I have some focaccia here that is my favorite recipe ever. It's from Bon Appetit. It's the no need focaccia. It's so fail proof and so delicious. You can't switch it out. You gotta use white flour. You can't use whole wheat or spelt or like a buckwheat flour. If you are not celiac, if you don't have an intolerance to gluten, I promise you, as long as you buy the highest, highest quality of all-purpose flour, it still has some nutrients, it's still good for us, it's still a great carb source. Anyways, that's my little rant on white flour. So this focaccia I made yesterday, and it was super easy. Honey and yeast into a bowl with some hot water and let the yeast bloom for five minutes. You'll start to see like active bubbles, like popping by themselves. And then um, after that five minutes, you add in five cups of flour and a tablespoon of salt and stir that and it resembles what the website calls it the recipe calls it as a shaggy dough mixture so that means it doesn't like clump up in a ball it kind of i mean it does definitely become a ball but it's kind of like um loose and raggedy kind of like a raggedy blanket or something like a towel like it's been kind of broken apart and then drench it in olive oil as i did and i left it in the fridge because you know i wasn't going to do this till today it says you know up to eight hours to a day I'm gonna let it sit for like a minute or two while I set up over by the sunlight <laughs> to finish this because the olive oil is now a little bit hardened because it was in the fridge. So we want the olive oil to kind of like loosen up a little bit. So all you gotta do is turn it. You'll pick up each side and then fold it on itself into the center and do that four times. So you're gonna do it a quarter turn every single way and kind of fold it. And then we're gonna transfer it to a pan to let it rise again. This is the pan I'm baking it in and it's gonna rise again for another hour. So if I want it to be ready in about like two hours or so to eat, um, I'm gonna work on it now so that it's ready by then and it's going to smell absolutely amazing. What I love about focaccia is you can totally just customize it. You'll see I'm gonna put rosemary and olives, my favorite olives ever. I've seen people try to do like little, like I even saw a TikTok, it was so cute. I'll put it up here of a Winnie the Pooh focaccia. So he made Winnie the Pooh out of different colored bell peppers. It was adorable. You can make all types of focaccia. Thank you for calling Midwest Photo Exchange. I was there Thursday evening and I put a camera on hold. I believe it was the Olympus Infinity, the film camera. And I am coming in today to pick it up. So I just wanted to, I know it was over 24 hours. So I was just hoping it's still there. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Have a good day. So I got ready and something I've been doing terribly terribly since I've been back. That's all my stuff right there, ignore that. From Italy, something I've been so bad about is dressing up and presenting myself every day. So I did that a ton when I was in Italy. I remember I would come home after the gym and then I'd have this window in between post gym and then lunch because I'd work all morning, finally go to the gym, and then I'd come home from the gym and I'd always change and put on, not always makeup, but at least I put jeans on or some nice pants or some kind of outfit to look presentable because you'll find if you go to Europe, a lot of the countries, um, definitely just especially Italy and a lot of the Mediterranean countries, don't really go out in leggings or workout clothes or anything like that. They look presentable. And so that's something I've been so terrible at. I've been spending a lot of time in leggings all day because I'm not going anywhere. And this weather, this atmosphere just doesn't, it just makes me want to not try because it's just so much more acceptable too to, you know, run around in your workout outfits. I didn't really want to, but I threw on an outfit. I'm actually probably going to change this outfit. This is the cutest sweater. I actually found it at uh, TJ Maxx. It is stunning. I love this sweater. And then this is a dress that Fabletics sent me and I'm not sponsored to say this or anything um, on here. It's definitely spring and summertime. I threw on this sweater over top because obviously it's like spaghetti strap. Um, if I'm gonna eat today, <laughs> which obviously I am, it's definitely very tight. Like I'm flexing and sucking it in right now. Not flex, not sucking it in flexed, sucking it in. So even though this dress is adorable and this sweater is the cutest thing ever, um, I'm probably gonna change back into my workout sweatshirt that I have right here and some jeans because I'm about to get in the kitchen right now and you guys know me, I'm like a mess. I'm a bull in a china shop so I'm gonna get this stained for sure and then I wanna feel a little bit more comfortable than this dress. But I'm glad I tried it on 
it's so cute so i also really want to go make a latte i have some sweet potato peanut butter brownies technically just super fudgy peanut butter brownies the secret ingredient was sweet potato um because i had some extra leftover from the sweet potato what is that called the sweet potato barley and lentil cakes that i made a couple like last week so i had leftover sweet potato that was cooked so i made brownies out of it yesterday experimental recipe we're about to go cut into them because i'm about to lose all sunlight here soon and i want to do a final cut in the sunlight that's the plan but first i need to change because i don't want to flex my core all day i'd like to like breathe today coffee time this is the most ratchet <laughs> latte making you'll ever see i wish i had a coffee machine i'm the only person in this house that drinks coffee i'm not gonna invest in that right now because i can't even make cute coffee videos we're working with what we got my mocha pot is in the mail it's coming i can't find my old one for some reason so i'm taking my favorite company ever which is chameleon i love their cold brew it's amazing but i'm not keeping it cold which if you're a coffee fanatic, which I'm sure I have a few that are watching that are obsessed with coffee, like I am, I'm aware. I'm aware that this is sinful. But I'm about to pop the cold brew into the microwave, which you could say could burn it, or um, just make it taste really bad, or that's not the point of cold brew. Cold brew is supposed to be cold. I know, I know all these things. But I want a hot latte, and this is what I got. Next, I'm going in with oat milk because it's my favorite milk there's been a lot of heat about oatly lately and just any oat milk in general or nut milk in general that has rapeseed oil or just oils in general oatly's froth is like unmatched to almost any other oat milk i've ever had and that's my favorite part of making a latte is the frothiness i'm so sick of like people being on health being in the health and wellness industry my industry whatever and just demonizing every little thing like for the love of god like if you want a cup of oat milk a day and it happens to have a little bit of this rant like less than two percent of this oil what are, what are we freaking out about why like until the research really comes out that it's going to like kill us or lead to cancer or whatever but it's just people will demonize every little thing in the health and industry health and wellness industry until the end of time and it's like let people have there are things, nothing is going to be 100% perfect, 80-20, Mediterranean lifestyle, you, we know this. My mom is so cute. Yesterday, my mom, because I was not feeling well yesterday, my mom, oh my god, this is how my mom's brain works. So I came home yesterday after like a few client meetings and stuff, and she said, I got you some treats. Oops. <laughs> She's like, I got you some treats. I got you one for your um, physical health and one for your mental health. Someone, some scientists will say like this counter and nutritionists will say this counteracts this and what's the point of it all? Like, stop overthinking it. If you want a wellness shot, eat a wellness shot. If you want a Reese's, eat a Reese's, drink a wellness shot. Um, if you want to drink oat milk and eat cheese in two hours, who cares? Why, why do we make it such a big deal? All right, that's my rant for the vlog. Or, yeah, hopefully. Anyways, um, I'm going to froth the milk. Oh, of course I did that. Gosh darn it, it was gonna be so good. And then I just went and did that crapola. Oh well. Cheers. So if you can tell, I've kind of been a little bit stressed out <laughs> since the moment I've started this vlog. I've kind of been rushing and talking, talking very quickly, but I just had a little check with myself. And whenever there's like only a limited amount of hours projected to have sunlight, I get very stressed and anxious. Like I need to make sure I take advantage of every minute of the sunlight for work and stuff to capture like content in this beautiful sunlight that's coming in because Columbus in the winter, we have like two days a week that's projected to have sunlight. And then I was like, Caroline, like working in a state of anxiousness and rushing is never good. It never creates anything good. So I'm just gonna take 10 minutes to breathe, realign myself, like stop rushing, stop moving constantly to the next thing. 
and just remind myself to keep looking at apartments other places than Columbus because I can't live like this. <laughs> I'm so dramatic and it's such first world problems, such first world problems. But huge thing from the Mediterranean lifestyle is they're usually not in a rush, unless they're driving. When they're driving, they're in a rush. Other than that, life is not rushed. <laughs> so I'm gonna sit with my coffee and not ruin this moment with one of my favorite things in the whole world. And then we'll get back to, honestly, and then it'll be time to start prepping some more food for lunch. And then we're running errands this afternoon, as you heard that I got on the phone. I'm gonna go get a film camera. So excited for a film camera. I've been really, really trying to decide what hobbies to take up in 2022 that I'm not monetizing from, um, which is hard because I want to monetize on, I don't monetize, that's a horrible way of saying it, but I don't want to make work. I have such an issue of as soon as like I'm doing something, if I'm either not being productive and so it's not going towards something like work or friends or family, then I'm like, what's the point of me even doing it? Like, why, why would I paint a picture today? There's no point in doing that. I'm horrible at painting and I'm not gonna get any benefit from it immediate, like in my head. But I told myself that's not true. I need to find a hobby where it's just, I detach from any work thoughts. I detach from, you know, people and responsibilities. And I definitely wanna challenge myself artistically because I tend to think I'm not creative and I think I'm not artistic at all, even though my job is very artistic when I let myself take recognition of that. Like, Carolyn, you create videos, you create food, you you are artistic in your own way. I like to put makeup on, obviously it's not the best. Um, but anyways, I'm trying to find an artistic hobby to take up this year. So I looked into, I already loved a watercolor and I'd love to get better at that. I also looked into pottery and then what was my next one? Oh, film. So I do love photography and videography and something I love so much about film cameras because obviously they're so popular right now. So this is like, you know, I'm being very basic going to get a film camera. The thing about film cameras that I love is you could easily throw on a filter to any of your photos and pretend it's film. Like you could put on a film filter. So why would I spend about $180 on the camera itself for it to easily break because it's from the 90s? and then spend you know $30 to develop all that film. But I love it so much because I am such an anxious person that I will take, you look at my camera roll, it's, it's disgusting. I need to clean out my camera roll so bad. There's probably 20,000 photos there, maybe more. And just in the past like four years, I just, am so, I take hundreds and hundreds of pictures and everything, I think it's gonna be perfect, it needs to be perfect, I get mad at myself, um, I overthink it, I edit it right away, I have to look at the photos right away, but how beautiful is it that you had one shot to get this photo? And there's a chance, a big chance it's gonna come out blurry too, not even on your fault, it's just the camera's fault. So you have one shot to take this photo, it easily could be blurry and you don't get to see it for however long it takes for you to develop the whole entire film. So I love that because it's then it's gonna be a surprise like, oh, I took that shot there, I did that there. And it's just like, it's bringing it back to very, like it's making me very present with that photo and puts more special, it makes the photo so much more special in my mind, which makes it more, very more artistic than just, here's a hundred photos of me in front of um, the Coliseum or something like that. Anyways, that's my little coffee chit chat. We're halfway through. I'm gonna enjoy this in silence. Just kidding, I'm gonna go get my phone. <laughs> and then we'll move on to creating more food content. Updates. I'm chugging water because I ate, just ate the fudgiest or at least like a handful of bites of the fudgiest brownies I've ever made in my life. I think they're good. Do they taste healthy? Absolutely. But I think they taste super fudgy. I'm gonna give them to my brother to taste test. This afternoon I'm gonna drop off some of the food that I made today. So I think they definitely taste healthy but they're still good and I want to eat more but I just popped the focaccia popped. <laughs> I just placed the focaccia in the oven. That's going to take about 20 minutes. So I'm going to get started on lunch because I want to eat that bread warm out of the oven. So let me pull up my hair. So like I said, I was going to meal prep, um, do another meal prep recipe video, but I just felt like I didn't have enough time to dedicate to it. Cause as I've mentioned before, they take 
like three, like two or three days of prep work and they take like four hours to film the day of and it's just, it's just a lot of work and you know what? I didn't want to and I just couldn't. But what we're about to make is a lot of what I was going to meal prep, which is the focaccia. And then with that focaccia, I was planning to meal prep, which I have ready, some lamb burgers. So I prepped the lamb burgers yesterday and I know what you're thinking. Caroline, red meat for meal prep. I thought we weren't supposed to eat red meat like several times a week. I thought we were supposed to have it like once a week, maybe twice at most. And that is kind of true. I definitely, when I was in Italy, they didn't eat that much red meat at all. The reason why I specifically chose lamb is one, because a variation of nutrients. We get ground beef in so many ways. So you want to switch up, like I always mention, all the different types of nutrients that you could be eating. But also because lamb is so naturally high in fat, it is so, contains so much moisture when you reheat it. Once we cook off the burger, Burgers and they cool completely. Throwing them in the freezer, it's actually a great idea for maybe next week or the week after that when you are really, you know, searching for a protein source to add in somewhere. When you reheat them in the oven, you just put them in some foil and reheat them, they contain a ton of moisture. At least that's what I've experienced. I could be totally wrong. I mean, you could have had different experiences. That's what I've experienced with my own cooking. And then the lamb burgers can also be uh, on top of like nourish bowls, cause you guys know that's just like a staple type of meal that I always resort, um, resort back to. There's so many great sources of pita out there if you wanted to pick up pita and throw on some like yogurt sauce, like make a simple Greek salad with tomatoes, cucumbers, and feta, and then top that on top of the patties. You can make like a pita sandwich. Today we're making a focaccia sandwich. You can make a rice bowl with with like hummus, tzatziki, lamb burgers, veggies, that kind of thing, or a grain bowl, couscous, use tabbouleh, and then like store-bought, a lot of that you can buy store-bought, and then you have like the most expensive thing usually, which is the protein already prepped at home. We're gonna cook off the lamb burgers, cook off some red onions and some red wine, because I had a ton of caramelized onions while I was living in Italy. My aunt made them like every other week for like a caramelized onion pizza. It was so delicious. So I was on a little caramelized onion kick while I was living in Italy. So I wanna recreate that with some caramelized onions. We're gonna whip up some goat cheese, AKA just add like some salt, pepper, honey, some more little tiny flavors, lemon, a lot of lemon to make it a more, you know, delicious kind of spread. And you could use that in so many ways too. Caramelized onions could be used in so many ways. And then lastly, we're gonna make a kale salad because Kale salad, another reason why that's amazing for meal prep. Kale salad specifically is so good for meal prep because kale is such a hearty green that even if you massage it, which we're gonna do a lot today, we're gonna massage a lot of kale. Um, even if you massage it way down, it'll last two or three days in the fridge. It doesn't go bad very quickly. Like, you know, uh, spinach could get slimy the next day or arugula, such a delicate, delicate leaf, but kale is not delicate. He's, he's a hearty one. Kale can last for meal prep, which is so nice if you just, really just want a salad or you're craving some kind of greens. So we're gonna make a super kale, simple kale salad with the roasted garlic tahini vinaigrette that I have, um, that I made on TikTok. Sorry if I always reference TikTok, I just try to keep track of where I have all my different recipes that I've showcased. It's so easy. It's using that roasted garlic from that one meal prep video that I made um, a few weeks ago. But anyways, that was a lot of rambling. I'm just gonna get into the kitchen now. has so much flavor. It's one of the best meals I've ever made. All right, so this is the issue. I don't make up when I say either I have issues or something, but my food content takes for freaking ever. It's 2.30. I was supposed to leave here at one. This kale salad's really good. I'm only eating half of the sandwich because it's already 2.30. I wanna go out to dinner. I'm not even hungry because I ate a little bit of everything as I started cooking. And then like, I feel like once you've been in the kitchen for a few hours, you kind of lose your hunger levels. If you like to cook, you might know what I mean. I'm just gonna finish this little salad, even though I think I might even have salad tonight. I'm just kind of discombobulated. This is the truth behind like a content creator. I'm stressed out. I'm kind of annoyed by the kitchen. 
so we're not cooking anymore today we're going out to eat dinner because while this was a success in total i'm telling you you got to try these flavors together lemon goat cheese red wine caramelized red onions and a nice savory lamb burger with some salty olive oil bread it's amazing it's bomb this is this is delicious but i'm frustrated and i'm tired and now i'm screwed because i was supposed to go to two different film stores or camera stores today to compare the film cameras but i don't think i have enough time so i just have to go with my gut and go with the one that i originally found ah <sighs> the drama i'm so dramatic guys all right first things first clean up the kitchen change out of this shirt because i've gotten splatters and smells all over it and just get the heck out of here But you're gonna open it. Okay. And then you just pop the film in so like that. And then you you're gonna give it a little bit more of a lead. You can even see there's a little diagram in there. But yeah. Thank you. Have yeah. a great night. Thanks, girl. All right, so successfully secured a film camera. I'm so excited about it. I've overthought this so much that it was just finally time to get it. Uh, sun is set and we are off to dinner. much I just feel very full I've had two glasses of wine today I'm back in my Italian mood but anyways we just got home um, my hair has transitioned so many different ways today <laughs> I think I'm gonna wash my face and watch a movie Saturday night this is my life right now I'm super cool I swear 